The Event Tech Podcast is brought to you by Event Hero. All of the event management software features in the world are worthless if they don't easily integrate with your registration system and other systems you need to make your event happen the way you want it to. Stop making superhuman effort and start using your superpowers. Event Hero provides features you need, like check-ins, lead retrieval, analytics, and alerts, all seamlessly integrated with your favorite registration system and other back-end tools. To learn more and to get started, visit eventhero.io. Welcome to the Event Tech Podcast. I'm John Federico, your host and executive producer. And today we are at Sexy Talk Live 2014, being held at the Convene uh, Meeting and Conference Center in downtown New York City at 32 Old Slip. I never get tired of saying that because I've never heard of Old Slip. Um, right in the heart of the financial district. And joining me today for my, for, this is my last but not least uh, interview, uh, is Clara DeSoto. Clara is the co-founder and creative director of ClearHeart Technology. Well, is it ClearHeart Tech? Tech. ClearHeart Tech. Yeah, All right. ClearHeart so is already long that. enough. All right, it's already long enough. ClearHeart Tech, and we're going to talk today about oh, a couple of things, some of my favorite things, um, wearables, and of course, bridging online and offline. And we're really going to be jumping off for, or using uh, Clara's presentation from earlier today as a jumping off point for this discussion. Welcome, Clara. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited uh, to chat. Excellent. I'm so glad you could join us because I know we had to juggle some stuff today. So, so thanks for making that happen. Of course. So the title of your, of, of your piece here was where W E A R everyone there got that is the engagement leveraging social media, NFC and wearable technology at your next event. So you were a moderator, though, or a presenter, or both? Uh, I was both. First, that was my uh, my presentation, and then I moderated a, a separate uh, panel um, uh, about uh, retaining engagement to a loyal with a loyal audience and branding. So oh. I I wore a lot of hats today. I was going to say you also Hel- have that marketing tech thing going on. So exactly, that works. Okay. yeah. Wore a lot of hats. Uh, used a lot of mics. So where is the engagement? I guess. So what's the what's the focus there? Was 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 that just to talk about how uh, you can engage folks using wearables? Was that the the premise? Yeah. So uh, at Clearheart, we you know specialize in leveraging emergent tech for uh, for to bridge online and offline, and, and our wearables program uh, is specific for events so that they can allow uh, attendees to digitally capture their event experience without sort of interrupting that experience. Okay. Um, so that's sort of what we 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 touched on in the in the presentation. So how, do, so how, okay, so before, before we go anything else, how does that work? So they're digitally capturing their experience without taking their focus from the experience. So what, what are they using? Um, so we equip the attendees with NFC-enabled wristbands. So silicon wristbands that are embedded with a little NFC chip. Uh-huh. Um, and then we station NFC-enabled kiosks or smaller readers throughout the event at designated touch points. Um, in the case of the South Beach Wine and Food Festival, for instance, we put uh, a kiosk, an NFC-enabled kiosk next to each tasting table. So when an event tr- sampled a burger, loved it, they could tap their uh, uh, their wristband on that particular kiosk to save all the content related to that to that uh, station into their digital memory bank. And I'm doing air quotes. Um, uh, uh, so that they could, after the fact, log on to their digital memory bank um, to retrieve all the content that they had shared. Um, and uh, and also the attendee could also could uh, rate immediately what they had just tried. So then, you know, when they access it in their digital memory bank, it's even more sort of intuitive of like next time they're choosing date night, they can just log on and see, oh, we really like this place from the from the food festival. OK, I like. Yeah. Oh, so really what you're saving in that case are likes, right? Because you're basically giving a tap and that's saying, hey, I like this and yeah. and save it to my my digital memory bank. Okay. All, all without having to put down your drink or your burger. Uh, yeah, well, I never want to put the drink down. So there, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Um, in my case, it would be a drink and a drink, but and not a drink. a drink and a burger. <laughs> uh, but and so just for a second here, we have a thing on the show we call Jargon Jail. So NFC, for, for those who don't know, is near field communication. It's a form of RFID that requires RFID. There's more jargon. Radio frequency identifier, uh, which re- NFC requires the device to actually be closer to, to whatever you're, you're using to capture the information. 
Yeah, exactly. They can do a lot of the same things, but um, RFID allows for uh, uh, sort of far range uh, tracking. So it's great for um, for like uh, event management, whereas what we specialize in is really kind of creating that custom experience for the for the users. So we're not tracking them from afar. Got it. Yes. And people appreciate that. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> so so you mentioned this 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 example of, of this, the, the use of this technology. Um, but here, here, this is what I, this is my, my thing with RFID and NFC. Um, unless you've got to have budget for that. I mean, it's not like, it's not, it's not cheap. Yeah, you're totally right. It isn't in its current form inexpensive. Uh, obviously, with any technology, the more we make updates to it, the the more we're, we're constantly trying to drive the price down. But the way that I would encourage planners um, and anyone in the sort of events community to think about it is that, you know, what this can accomplish a lot of things that you're already spending money on. So essentially those line items can be, can be sort of eliminated and put towards this one, the, the NFC line item essentially is. And that's sort of how we hope that, you know, it, it, even sort of smaller things like printed materials that you would be spending a lot of money right. on to distribute all of a sudden that, that sort of that cost gets absorbed into this. Yes, I totally agree. So we, we go through that a lot in our business where people are so absorbed. Well, they're busy, right? They're yeah. looking for a solution to do X and you present them with a price and they go, I can't afford that. Well, wait a minute. This replaces three things in your budget. Exactly. And now it actually costs less than those three things. Oh, <laughs> but these people are so busy and so focused that sometimes you just have to call it out for them. Right. Totally. And then the other thing that we try to drive home is just this, the, the long term benefit of something like this. You know, it might be the most expensive the, the first year you do it. But, you know, once you've proven it and you see, you know, just the, the, the great kind of response from the attendees, the sponsors are all kind of in, in, a, in the case of Outside Lands, for instance, you know, the event organizers were already telling us at the event that every single other uh, sponsor there was like, OK, we want to do that next year. So it's just, it's like, you know, you, it, it might feel like a big sort of step, the first activation, but you know, it, it sort of, it, it pays for itself after that. Sure. And it's, it's, you know, I, I love it in the sense that, so I don't like it because again, it's, <laughs> it's I'm, I'm very much again about costs and all that. Cause we, that, a lot of our customers are cost conscious, cost conscious. Um, but I, the simplicity you can't beat, right? Yep. I, I see you have one on your arm right now. I do. Um, and, and, and it's a white thing with a little smiley face or something on it. It's actually the insurance logo. They've been a great sponsor with us. Insurance. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that you can just walk over and tap it and be done is is great, you know, yep. and, and you don't have to take it out of your pocket. It's on your wrist. There are, I can totally see lots of, lots of benefits. Totally. And, you know, uh, of, of course for the food festivals it, that just, it, it's, it's a, it's such a simple activation, but it can have such a powerful impact. But what we like is, you know, how we can take it even a step further. Uh, in the case of the Manhattan cocktail classic, for instance, attendees could link their Facebook accounts to their wristbands. Uh, and we had a partnership with Bonobos, the menswear I think I'm, line. I actually, I know I read about this. Okay, yeah. You got some good press on this. Yeah. We had some great press where uh, Bonobos um, dressed eight influencers, actually including Alexis Ohani and the co-founder of Reddit. Uh -huh. Sorry, Jargon Box. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> no, that's um, good. Yeah, and uh, not only did they dress them in these awesome suits, we put NFC readers in their lapels so that attendees could tap to like oh, their outfits. Oh, I like that outfit. On Facebook, oh, okay. exactly. Yeah, because, good. you know, the... The, at the Manhattan Cocktail Classic, it is, you know, it's, it's a creative black tie event. So the natural behavior there, you know, the two sort of most frequently uttered phrases there are probably, where's the bathroom? And uh, I love what you're wearing. So we wanted to, again, create that digital reaction to this this, this natural offline action. That sounds like my day to day. Mm -hmm. Hi, where's the bathroom? And I like your t-shirt. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> exactly. Kidding. Still figuring out how we can do that for chicks, though, without it being harassment. Um, oh, yeah, we have yeah. Yeah, not going there. Yes, it's a challenge. Yeah. Um, Yes, I noticed you're like Alexis Ohani, and I'm like, yes, men don't don't do that. Yeah, with women. Exactly. So, so here's the the thing. Uh, also, a challenge I have, right? So, on your right wrist mm -hmm. is a custom piece of technology that I have to pay for. On your left wrist is something that nobody you're the only person nobody buys except you. Uh, so, I, I'm referring to, of course, a Galaxy S, whatever it's called. It's Galaxy a, Gear. Galaxy Gear yeah. Watch. You're the only person I've in the flesh ever seen wear that thing. <laughs> so, but. The, the benefits can't be denied, right? That's a custom device that is not. It's off the shelf. The consumer pays for it. And you can essentially use the data embedded on it in a very similar way that you use the thing on your right wrist. Mm -hmm. So the question is, when is the, right, is the left wrist going to catch up to the right wrist? Uh, I mean... I guess I hope not too soon since I'd be out of a job. But um, uh, I mean, ultimately, what's great about both of them is that they're in, uh, limiting my phone dependency. 
You know, uh, so I, th- I think that, you know, obviously it'll only be a matter of time but before there's an NFC chip in one of these. Right. But, um, uh, you know, it's and, and that, that would be a great future, essentially, is, is that where people can kind of have like this much less obtrusive way of, coll- of you know, digitally capturing their event experiences. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, I guess it's just, I don't, I, perhaps I wouldn't be out of a job. Maybe I could be a part of that somehow. Uh, I, but, somehow I think you'd figure it out. Yeah, yeah I think I could too. But um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm excited for that. Again, like, I, I hate texting. I, my phone is really annoying. There, I can say it. Um, so I, I, I look forward to a time when, when, when uh, actions can be that sort of seamless that I'm just like, okay, you know, people are, especially in the event planning community, what are we trying to do? We're trying to preempt and to, uh, and, and to know what people want ahead of before they, they even do. So um, with that kind of thinking in mind, uh, being able to use this really as a magic wand, um, I think that's pretty exciting. <laughs> a magic wand. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. It's more like a superhero thing. Just like, Cause you're totally. waving your wrist. I, I, I had, uh, so I'm an early adopter um, in case my Twitter handle wasn't uh, <laughs> obvious enough. And um, yeah, so I've had I've had a Pebble, I've had a MetaWatch, I've had I had another one, and I, I sold them all on eBay. I got rid of them. You know, my, well, mm. I sat on my desk. And my wife said, "What are these things?" I'm like, "Never mind." And I just got rid of them. And you know, um, it was just one more thing to beep and buzz. Uh, I, I didn't really find the utility in it. And 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 then similarly, I look at things like Google Glass, and I'm like, "Yeah, creepy and um, <laughs> and not all that attractive, though really great for certain situations." Uh, you know, I, I could see the medical community or, you know, anyone who needs that heads up display using it. Um, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not long on wearables in their current format. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, that's, I don't know what, when is it going to, like, when are we going to fit everything that Google Glass has into the glasses I'm wearing now? That's really what it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, totally. I think fashion is a big, big component, but I think you kind of, you 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 sort of already said what the what the issue is is that these things are trying to do too much and that would be sort of my chief complaint with something like this versus something like this and that you know I think with any new technology the way that you you introduce it to people is you have to tell them how to use it you need that silver bullet uh, use case so that it's like oh of course how have I been doing X thing before this right. came along so I think that you know the real challenge with with Pebble with with you know with uh, with other smart objects with Google glasses that people aren't haven't been you know you need to really help hold their hand and explain this is when you use this um, and I think that you know it's just it's it kind of comes down to uh, our ethos at Clearheart, which is that um, you know human behavior should be dictating technology not the other way around but I think that you know if Pebble had started off with just like here's a watch that tells you when your team scores for what and you can follow your teams and this is just because you know how many times are dudes like oh I'm just checking the score now it's it's like, look, this is spe- a specific, this thing that you are doing already, here's an easier way to do it that, you know, won't get you in trouble with your boss, wife, you know, the other people at the christening, things like that. Um, so I think really like I- introducing new technology needs to be uh, a part of a great, a, a specific sort of use case. Well, okay. So with that in mind, um, you know, there's a lot of education going on around this, this magical technology now called iBeacon. Ah, yes. I'm I'd excited. Begin. Aren't you excited? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I uh, so I, I wrote a blog post a while back uh, and the title was very simple. Blo- iBeacon is not the answer, but what's the question? Because that's really the big issue is what's the question? Yeah. You, you use a technology to solve a problem or achieve a goal or whatever. And iBeacon is just this unicorn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. I mean, I think that the, uh, so the, the question that I think a lot of event planners and, and, you know, arenas and stuff like that, that they are trying to, to answer is who is coming to my event? You know, that just from just, you know, knowing who the, how often their, their season ticket holders are to, you know, who's coming back, who's from where that's, that's really the question that, that I think, you know, events and, and arenas and that sort of thing and sports teams, they all want to answer th- so that they can, so that they can learn from it and then offer a better product as a result. Um, but I completely agree that iBeacon isn't the answer. I think that a lot of marketers get very excited about it um, because, you know, obviously you get a lot of people face down in their devices 
is, of course, it makes sense to be right there with it. But, you know, I think it's just a question of asking yourself, well, would you like a push notification? And I, I mean, I would like to meet the person who says, why, yes. I mean, obviously, if it's telling if that push notification is telling me that I've just, you know, one of or I don't know, just like I'm getting a lot of money or something, then like, obviously, that's a different question. But yes, but this reminds me, iBeacon, as it's described these days, especially in the minds of marketers, mm -hmm. um, reminds me of the of the quote unquote old days when Bluetooth first arrived. Yep. And people will go, you just walk down the street and they can Starbucks can zap you with a coupon. I'm like, really? Who the hell wants that? Yeah, like nobody exactly. wants. And that's that's basically what we're describing here. Yeah. But for the events industry, I, I think it's okay for retail. I think it's, I think iBeacon is fine for retail because totally. these are fixed points. You can manage them on a regular basis. Events, events are transient. That means you have mm -hmm. to set up an iBeacon infrastructure for every event and you have to define all the all the tools and tech to make to manage it. Yeah. Ah, I don't see that. Exactly. That you know, I think you're totally right. For retail makes sense. People are already doing that that comparison shopping. Uh, for airports also makes a yes, ton of right. sense. Yeah. But um, for events, you know, it, it, event, events are meant for for being in the moment and interacting with others and interacting for with what you're there to do. So to expect people to overcome these two huge hurdles, one being downloading an app, which, you know, as we saw at the, today, that, that that in and of itself can be a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but secondly, you know, for having Bluetooth on where, you know, say this is an event after work, at that point, people's batteries might already be kind of dwindling. What's the first thing you turn off? It's Bluetooth. Obviously, Bluetooth low energy w w doesn't zap your power nearly as much. But, you know, those are, and I, I believe they just made that update, but I think you used to have to have your, the app running in the background also. So there's a through. Yeah, they did not. Some want. changes, yeah. Um, but so, yeah. So, I think that it's just so counter. It's very counterintuitive to what you know events are all about in the first place. So, um, you know, I obviously I always get excited about new technologies, and I think that again, it does that it does have have its place, and you know, in airports and retail. But for events, I just think that you know, it's. It, it, the other thing is that you know it, it, it's going to go the way of the QR code. It's going to get in the hands of one. Hey, don't diss on my Sorry, QR code. I, well, I, the, here's the issue. Is I'm that, only kidding. Uh, go ahead. You get one advertiser who who does it, who who creates a bad experience, bad user experience, and it ruins it for that person for the rest of any yes. time they come. So it's just it's it's kind of. Well, I, you know, I, I I always say don't because we use QR codes on the badges, so we're sponsored oh, right. here today. Oh, cool! And that we you know had produced the badges. No, no, there's no need to look uncomfortable. Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> um, but that's a very common misconception: is people, you know, what is the phrase? Don't hate the player, hate the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the the lowly QR code is actually a very useful, inexpensive tool, and it's great. But like when marketers are like, scan this code, really from where? Oh, that billboard there. What? <laughs> scan this code where? Oh, it was in your email. It's on your computer. <laughs> what? Like, and then they take you to some stupid website, like. Yes, it's gotten it's taken exactly. a, a perfectly usable technology and, and given it a bad name. Yeah. So we use it for what it's good at. A just simple, totally. cost effective way to do it. Um It's brilliant. And I, I just but I wish that, you know, there there wasn't such inconsistency across scanners and the same deal. It's just I like right. I'm the first to say advertisers kind of ruined it for everyone and I and I can see it happening already with iBeacon. Absolutely. You read yeah. my mind. Right. So we so we had the same experience. Uh we don't don't just use any scanner, even though mm -hmm. you can use any scanner, you use our apps. So it's our QR code, our apps. Great. Great. It's all purpose built and there's none of that screwing around stuff. Mm -hmm. But iBeacon, yeah, it's become People are just like, well, it's still BLE, sorry, Bluetooth Low Energy, which is what drives all this, everyone. It's still Bluetooth Low Energy, but we just made some tweaks to it and made it do this. And it's like, well, no, it's, no, it, yeah. it just breaks the experience and all that. Totally. Yeah. It, it's, um, so, so let, the final question, because I, I, I'm already, I'm already over my, my, you know, the time you've gifted me today. <laughs> sorry. Um, and this is just a fun conversation. Totally. Apple. Yes. Wearable. Is it coming? Uh, an Apple wearable? I think so. I think that they're biding their time, which is really smart. I mean, look at all these other players that, that they've been able to learn from and and see, you know, and discover what that, you know, silver bullet use case is. They're obviously going to get a lot more lift than I think a lot of these other players just because they are Apple. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, I, I do think it's coming. It, it, I'm, I'm very interested to see, you know, whether or not they're going to be able to sort of to, to differentiate in, in, in what way. I, I really... 
I don't know. I, I obviously have. I'm not as big of an Apple fan girl as as most, given the fact that they've shunned NFC in the way that they have. But who knows? There's always rumors. You know, the new iPhone six supposedly is going to have NFC one of these days. Apple will never adopt NFC. Yeah, that's my opinion. But the, but the thing is, you know, at the end of the day, if Apple is is if it, it appears to be such a big part of the the market, but you step off U.S. soil and Android is everywhere. Sure. So it's kind of like, you know, we we still think that it has legs for that reason. But in terms of an Apple wearable um i think people will be a lot more drawn to it because again it, it will probably do something amazing that syncs across multiple devices and i think that that will be sort of the crux of how they differentiate is how it sort of it, it works together in the apple ecosystem yes I, I and i can see them they won't they won't release a product an undifferentiated product mm-hmm. so it won't just be another smartwatch yeah so it i'm gonna i'll wait i'll hold my judgment until until you know you see it, about yeah. what yeah until i see it um, I'm, I'm not an Apple fanboy in the sense that I won't just buy everything they make. I don't do that. Uh, and I don't upgrade every time something, a new version comes out. Uh, Cause uh, you know, but they do tend to, I, I am, I own all of my products are Apple ecosystem products, mm-hmm. right? You know, MacBook air, uh, you know, iPhone, iPad, Apple TV. So, you know, they're all, so I, so it would make sense that I would buy, purchase something that's part of that ecosystem, mm-hmm. but even still it's gotta be useful. So, uh, you know, they, they got, in my opinion, they've got a, um, they've got a, a, a big hurdle to, yeah. to really cross. Totally. So. I will say that what is kind of fun is that I can take pictures on this, like a spy, which I did at the beginning of my presentation. In Again, fact, creepy. Pictures and videos. Okay. Here we go. Got you. Jeez. Great. Jeez. Um, it always makes a noise, though, so you can't really be that uh, tricksy about it. All right, fine. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I think that, that we're, I feel like everybody's always said this, but oh, it just took a picture accidentally, um, is, that, uh, is that we are living in sort of a very exciting time. Um, and, uh, and, you know, it's, but it's up to us again, like event, people in the events industry are the ones that are, you know, defining like how we should behave in public. Um, so uh, that's, that's so, a good point. I never really thought about it that exactly way. so you know we should be sort of embracing that i guess higher calling um to you know to, if i i i just recently watched uh back to the future too and in that future nobody has a phone out so you know i'm I obviously like that's it's that's a, a pipe dream at this point but i think that there's something to be said for look people are going to are going to be fatigued by constantly having their phone out. So they, they're going to be, they, so they are looking for, sort of, but they still want to be able to the, capture their, their digital experiences. So it's up to us to sort of give them those tools. I agree. I want my hoverboard, by the way. Where is my, <laughs> Good question. Where is my hoverboard? All Biff right. has it. Clara, thank you so much for joining me today. I know I'm the only thing standing between, between you and the cocktail reception. <laughs> um, so... Uh, if people want to reach out to you and thank you for joining me today, how can they do that? Uh, so you can reach us on Twitter at, at clearheart, C-L-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-N-Y. Um, also, just shoot me an email, holler at clearheartdigital.com. I'm going to spell that because it is so long. I really should have thought about that before I named my business. That's holler, H-O-L-L-E-R at C-L-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-D-I-G-I-T-A-L.com. Or my own personal Twitter, I'm at claradactyl. Clara da- Oh, I love that. That's Thank great. You, Don't yeah. worry. All this will be in the show notes. Fantastic. Anyway, thanks, Clara. Thank you. So signing off today for, uh, or I should say at the Taxi Talk Live conference in uh, August of 2014. We're here at the Convene uh, Conference and Meeting Center uh, in downtown New York City. Uh, I'm John Federico for the Event Tech Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thank Bye-bye. you.